brethren, I have just one request. Uh, you pray in our behalf. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Otherwise, we cannot understand and accept his message. And brother, this morning you have a very interesting experience. Yesterday, Brother Moreno, he asked me to, to bring Brother Ricardo here. And I, I never went there. Then I asked the, the address. And he gave me the address. But when I took note of the address, there was a problem with one letter. Instead of wise, I put wife. <laughs> then I tried to find the address in the internet. There is no wife <coughs> street in Roanoke. Then I tried to find the place through the zip code. And I went there. And I find the wise street. But I was searched for wife street. Then I returned here. Then Brother Moreno explained to me, no, that's not wife street, it's wise street. But the, problem, the, the reason why I bring this experience here is that uh, we find the spirit of prophecy that uh, being almost saved means holy lost. And uh, because of one letter, I was wholly lost in this morning. I could not find the address, just because of one letter. Let me read this expression here. There are some who seem to be always seeking for the heavenly pearl, but they do not make an entire surrender of their wrong habits. They do not die to self that Christ may live in them. Therefore, they do not find the precious pearl. They have not overcome unholy ambition and their love for worldly attractions. They do not take up the cross and follow Christ in the path of self-denial and sacrifice. Almost Christians, yet not fully Christians. They seem near the kingdom of heaven, but they cannot enter there. Almost, but no, not wholly saved. <coughs> Means to be not almost, but wholly lost. Brethren, that is a very solemn thought. Very solemn, very serious thought. We can be almost. We can be 99%. But if you don't make an a entire, complete surrender to Christ, we are 100% lost. Uh, this will be terrible, brethren. And I always ask to myself, do I make an entire surrender to the Lord? Always I'm asking to myself this question. What's the meaning, brethren, to surrender ourselves completely to the Lord? What do you think about? What is the, the meaning of the expressions? Entire surrender. Let us, let us quote some possibilities, some examples. I like to do some little things that are against God's will. Because we know that none of us here will commit social sins. But uh, we do commit some, some sins. And for us, they are not so important. God's love, we are saved by grace. And with the uh, wrong understanding about salvation by grace, we can be, be lost. Because we think this way, God will take seriously if I commit a, a murder. God will take seriously if I commit adultery. But uh, the law of God has ten commandments, not only two. Ten commandments. Am I faithful to the ten commandments? <coughs> Do I have some dear sin in my life? Do I love some kind of sin? When you talk about sin, we, we, are, we are saying about our thoughts, 
about our words, our behaviors, our deeds. But, brethren, to, to make a long story short, what's the essential condition for salvation? Entire surrender. When, Christ, uh, when Nicodemus came to Christ, Christ gave this message, entire surrender, but he used other words. You must be born, be born again. With the young man, the rich man, he's, he's, uh, he conveyed the same message, complete surrender, but he used another words. Go and sell everything. That's complete surrender. Then Christ used different words to convey the same message. If you do not surrender yourself completely, you are completely lost. Then, Brad, that's a very serious matter. Very serious matter. We have in the Bible different examples of surrender. And let us open our Bibles in First King. Chapter 20, verse 1 through 4. <coughs> Sister Basimore, could you read these verses? First King 20, 1 through 4. Then Bashai, the king of Sabrina, gathered all his hosts together. And he was thirty and two kings with him, horses and carriage, and he went up and besieged the Syrian and warned against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab the king of Israel into the city and unto his unto him, thus says Ahab, The silver and the gold is mine, their wives also, their children, even the God goodness goodness are mine. And the king of Israel answered, And my lord, O king, according to that saying, I am thy, and all that I have. Mm -hmm. well, what was the proposal of Ben-Hadad to Ahab? Give me everything, because your silver, your, your gold, your wives, your family, every, everything that you have, mine. Is it true? Who was speaking to Ahab? Satan. Satan speaks like that. All that you and all that you have is mine. But sadly, Ahab accepted that. Do you realize that? Ahab made a complete surrender to him. He says, And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to your saying, I am yours. And the, all that I have, that's complete surrender. Then he surrendered himself completely to Satan, through the king of Syria. Let us consider another surrender. Acts chapter 9, 1 through 6. Brother Lycos, could you read this verse? Acts 9, 1 through 6. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were on the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And he journeyed, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the ghost. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? <coughs> then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, 
and you will be told what you must do. Thank you. Brethren, um, what was, is, it, is it easy to surrender? No. 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 Because our self is too expensive. Too, we have a, a high price for ourself. Then to surrender is not easy thing. To be under complete control of the Lord is not easy. Because we have a sinful nature. We have a selfish nature. And uh, even Christ said to Paul, and I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. It's hard. Especially in the, in the case of Paul, he was a learned man, a very educated man. He, was, he, he had a tremendous knowledge of philosophy and the language, and he was educated the feet of Gamaliel. <coughs> And he was a high authority also. He, has, he had human power. He received power from the priests, Sanhedrin. And even Christ said to him, it's not easy for, him, for you to do that. But uh, I would say that it's not easy for each one of us. It's not easy. But if we decide, if we decide, then Christ takes the necessary steps. As in the, in the case of Paul, Christ intervened direct, uh, directly to, to win Paul, Paul to the gospel. But uh, did you find here, brother, when, which verse defined the surrender of Paul? Which verse? Six. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That surrender. First he asked, who are you? to do this thing with me. But when Christ identified himself as Christ, as the Savior, as the Messiah, Paul said, then he surrendered himself. What will thou have me to do? That surrender. Uh, we have a, a wonderful quotation here. It says, self-surrender is the key note of the teachings of Christ. Often it is presented and enjoined in language that seems authoritative. Because God says that there is no other way to save man than to cut away from his life that which, if entertained, would demoralize the whole being. And what's the essence, the essence of Christ's teachings? Self-surrender. That's the essence. And Christ used many times some some severe words, as in the case of the young, young, the rich man. You need to sell? Because Christ could say to, to the man, look, if you, if you give the tithes, it's enough. And you can give perhaps 5% to, to help the Ruanoke school. You can, can give a little more for missions. But how much did Christ ask? A hundred percent. You you need to give me everything, but not for me. I don't need money. Give to the poor. Then what was the reaction? The Bible says that the young man became sad because he was very rich, very rich. But for what the people, Christ said different. Another rich man, as Nicodemus, Christ said, you, you need just to be born again. That's enough. And for Zacchaeus, Christ said nothing. He just said, look, I'm going to, to be in your house. Because Zacchaeus already surrendered himself. <coughs> then self-surrender is the keynote of the teachings of Christ. Now, brethren, one, one, another, another question. Are we reading... We read in the beginning that uh, Ahab, he surrendered himself completely to Satan. Do we need to do, to do that? What is enough to put ourselves on the hand of Satan? Do we need to say, I surrender myself completely to the control of Satan? No. 
The spirit of prophecy says that uh, when we refuse to surrender ourselves to Christ completely, then we are under control of Satan. Let us think seriously about that, brethren. Because if you don't surrender ourselves completely to Christ, then Satan takes control. All that. It's true that uh, there is some satanic religious and that those people they make vo vows to surrender to Satan. Satanism. But it's not necessary that. All who refuse to surrender to Christ, they put their, themselves under Satan's control. When the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the new heart. Amen. As change is wrought, which man can never accomplish for himself. It is a supernatural work bringing a supernatural element in human nature. The soul that's yielded to Christ becomes his own fortress, which he holds in a revolted world. And he intends that no authority shall be known in it but his own. A soul thus kept in possession by the heavenly agencies is impregnable to the assault of Satan. Not, not now, brethren, in the following sentence. But unless we do yield ourselves to the control of Christ, we shall be dominated by the wicked one. Then if we don't surrender ourselves to Christ, Satan so takes control. We must inevitably be under the control of the one or the other of the two great powers that are contending for the supremacy of the world. It's not necessary for us deliberately to choose the service of the kingdom of darkness in order to come under its dominion. We have only to neglect to ally ourselves with the king of light. If we do not cooperate with the heavenly agencies, Satan will take possession of the heart Amen. and will make it his abiding place. The only defense against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith in his righteousness. Unless we become vitally connected with, with God, we can never resist the unhallowed effect of self-love, self-indulgence, and temptation to sin. No, no, brethren, look at our danger. We may live off many bad habits. How about us here? We don't drink, we don't smoke, they don't eat meat. A lot of things we, do, we don't do. We, do, we don't, do, don't do. Many things. We may live off many bad habits. For the time, we may part company with Satan. But we douse a vital connection with God. Through the surrender of ourselves to him. Moment by moment, we shall be overcome. Without a personal acquaintance with Christ and a continual communion, we are at the mercy of the enemy and shall do his binding in the end. Then, but the only condition for salvation is complete surrender. We can give to Christ many things. But if you retain one sinful thought, one, if we, we preserve one sin in our hearts, it is enough to be lost, completely lost. Now, why should we surrender to Christ, ourselves to Christ? Why? There, there are many reasons. One is that uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. 
the world and they that dwell therein. Then this planet, all the inhabitants of this planet belongs to Christ. Because Christ created us and Christ paid the price, our salvation. Then, brethren, in reality, all of us, those who are here, those who are outside, the whole world belong to Christ by creation and by redemption. Both, by both creation and redemption, we are the Lord's property. Then, brother, when we refuse to surrender ourselves to the Lord, what are we doing in reality? We are stealing. We are robbing Him. Uh, we're going to use a very wonderful illustration. Especially young people, they have dreams with cars. It's not that way. Then let us compare this way. A young, people, a young man, he has a dream to buy a, a powerful car. But he has not money. Then he, save, he saves money, long years. And he's a good administrator, and he decides to buy on cash the car. After many years, he goes to the dealer, and he says, look, I'd like to have uh, that car. And uh, the, the man says to him, look, I don't have this car here. In two months, I'll have the car. But we receive just few, few cars like this. You should pay in advance. Then when the car arrives here, we will deliver it to you, okay? Then the man, the, the young man, he gives the money. Pays on, in advance. Now he goes home, he, he starts dreaming. When my car will arrive? A few months later, the, the company calls him, look, your car is here. Would he say, I don't have the car anymore? Would he be so crazy to say that? I decide that uh, I pay the price, but I don't, have, I don't want the car anymore. Would he say that? Never. <coughs> then we're going to illustrate this with our salvation. Christ came, sacrificed everything. He sacrificed his position as sovereign of, the, of heaven. He became poor. And uh, Paul said that he died the death of cross. It was a shameful death to save us. Then, brethren, all of us we are, who are here, we were bought in advance. Christ paid the price almost 2,000 years ago. Then we were bought by Christ. We belong to him. Would Christ refuse to receive us? Never. Let us be sure of that, brethren. The Bible says that those who go to Christ, he will never <coughs> cast them away. Then we can be sure that Christ will accept, Christ accept us. The question is that are, are Am I willing to surrender completely to him? That's the question. What's the result of complete surrender? God has lifted his own standard, the commandment of God in the face of Jesus. And the experience that follows complete surrender to God is righteousness, Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. What's the result? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Are we joyful people? Are we happy people? Or are we always complaining, repining? What's, our, um, what's my condition, brother? I, that's a personal question. What's my condition? Am I happy people? Am I a happy person? Do I have the joy of the Holy Spirit in my heart?
Am I a peaceful pe person? That's a very essential question, brethren. Let us mention some other surrender. Brethren, uh, we studied previous, previous week that about Abraham. He committed a very serious mistake, we know that. But uh, the Bible calls him the father of the believers. He overcame. He used to lie sometimes. And uh, both of them, Abraham and his wife, they tried to help the Lord and they committed a very serious mistake. Till today you have the consequence. <coughs> they, are, they are fighting. The, the, the children of Ishmael and the, the, the children of Isaac, they are still fighting. Because of that mistake of Abraham and his wife. But Abraham overcame, he became the father of the believers. Why? We can, uh, in Galatians, Paul calls him the father of the faith, faithful. Why? When we study uh, his experience, his almost last experience, he had uh, one legitimate son, Isaac. And when Abraham was loving so much that, that, that son, Christ came to him and said, Abraham, please give me thy son, but not Ishmael. Give thy son that you love and make a sacrifice with his, your son. Let us, let us put ourselves, brethren, in the, the shoes of Abraham. But uh, it's not necessarily that Christ will ask uh, from us our son or our daughter. G uh, God always asks from us the thing that we must love <coughs> if we are willing to, to give to him. If you love sin, Christ asks that we should give that sin to him. If we love some special defect of character, Christ asks us to, to give up, to surrender to, to him, that, that kind of sin. But what was the answer of Abraham? When Christ said to him, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, Christ was very specific. Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and offer him for a sacrifice. The, the, the Spirit of Prophecy says that uh, Abraham's soul was rented asunder by the command. Why? Because he loved his son. That was the case. But he did not hesitate to obey. But what's the meaning of this, this phrase here? He did not hesitate to obey. Complete surrender. He, he was thinking like this, God is love, God is powerful. If I, if I offer my son to Christ, Christ can rise him again. <coughs> then I do that. I obey the Lord. I know the Lord. He's good. He is merciful. He is love. He is righteous. Then he makes a complete surrender. That's the reason why Abraham is called the father of the faith. Then how about his children of, in the faith? Because we believe that we are children of Abraham by faith. What should be our behavior? The same. The same. And the spirit of prophecy says... We need the face of Abraham in our church today. And when the Pharisees, they, they told Christ, uh, we are Abraham's children. But Christ answered to them. If you were the work. children of Abraham, you would do the, work. the works of Abraham. Then if we are children of Abraham, then we should have the same face and the same works. 
same kind of obedience. Brethren, I'd like to ask again, again do, you, do we have perfect peace in our hearts? Just for each one of us to meditate upon. Why? If you don't have complete peace, what's the reason? Because you didn't do a complete surrender. surrender. In the heart of Christ, where reigned perfect harmony with God, there was perfect peace. He was never elated by applause, nor dejected by censure or disappointment. <coughs> brethren, I should confess to you, brethren, when someone comes to me and says, Oh, Brother Silva, you are a very, very smart man. <laughs> I'm tempted to believe that I'm a smart man. I'm tempted. And when someone comes to me, Oh, Brother you have serious problem. You need to overcome this. You need to overcome that. What's my reaction? Hmm. Why this brother came to me to say that? Does he think that he's better than me? Brother, how, what's our reaction when we are flattered? Because Satan uses two kind of weapons. He uses to flatter ourselves in our presence, Amen. and he uses to accuse someone else in her back, in his back. Then, uh, in other words, Satan enjoys when we speak evil, when we backbite. And he enjoys when we flatter someone else Amen. in his presence. Oh, brother, you are a very educated man. Oh, you are very capable. Oh, you are... You, are very, you have very good qualities, and we attempt to accept that. That is a Satan's trap. But the spirit of prophecy says that Christ, when he was flattered, he was not affected. When he was condemned, he was not affected. He was the same. He had the same spirit. He, he, he was balanced. He was under God's control all the time. Amid the greatest opposition and the most cruel treatment, he was still good courage. But many who profess to be his followers have an anxious, troubled heart. Because they are afraid to trust themselves with God. They do not make a complete surrender to him. Then, Brad, what's the reason why we are not uh, completely peaceful? Why? It's missing a complete surrender. For they think from the consequence that such a surrender may involve. Unless they do make this surrender, they cannot find peace. Amen. Then the condition is surrender. The result is peace. Brother, the reason is that we always think that uh, we are not so deficient. <coughs> we have some good qualities. It's true that we need the help of Christ, but just help. Just help. I can do many things by myself, but I cannot go to heaven without Christ. Then I need some help of Christ. Is that correct? No, no. no. We need to be under complete control of Christ, not just some help. We need to be guided by Christ always. God is in heaven, but he has, he has delegated his work to those on this earth. And what is our main work in this earth? This work is to represent Christ. Brethren, the most important office in a nation, one of the most important office in one nation is the ambassador. Is the 
the biggest authority in the other, in other country. He represents the, his country. And how, is, how are we called by the Lord? Ambassadors. Then we are here, brethren, to represent Christ. At home first. At home first. Then outside, in the school, in the church, in the work. Then our main work in this world is to represent Christ. We can speak about Christ, we can preach, we can, we can distribute literature, we can do every important work, we need to do that. But unless we, do not, unless we represent Christ, we are not his representative. Christ gave himself a full, complete offering. In other words, Christ surrendered himself completely to be our Savior. And the condition to be saved, to surrender ourselves to him completely. And God calls upon all men to make a complete surrender of all they have and are to him. The same surrender that Ahab made to, made to Ben-Hadad. I am yours with all that I have. We should do to the Lord. I belong to thee, and everything that I have belongs to thee also. That they may be collaborators with Christ. All that is required on our part is a complete surrender of our thoughts, and the purpose, our will, all that we have and are to God, to be used as he may direct. The first thing that we should surrender to the Lord, our thoughts. If our mind is under control of Christ, then everything will be under his control. Many profess to come to Christ while they yet cling to their own ways, which are painful yoke. <coughs> Selfishness, covetousness, ambition, love to the world, love of the world, or some other cherished sin destroys their peace and joy. How many sins do we need to to lose our, our peace. One. One is enough. One sin is enough. They are restless, impatient, dissatisfied. Their spirits chafe under the weight of care and responsibility. All because they have not made a complete surrender to Jesus. And are seeking to carry their burden without his aid. I commit this mistake, Brad. Many times I... I try to, do, to, to fulfill my duties. And when I, I cannot fulfill my duties, I am frustrated. Then I became impatient, nervous. My back starts hurting. I need massage because I am under tension. Because I'm trying to, to fulfill my duties by myself. That's a sin. Have faith in God. When you make mistakes, turn your defeats into victories. Amen. Your love and fidelity will be tested by difficulty, disappointment, and trial. Amen. This your faith must overcome. It is the duty of every youth to place himself decidedly and without reserve on the, light, the side of Christ in order that he may develop a character that will be after the similitude of Christ. He who would have all from, from Christ must give all to Christ. Christ is willing to give us all that we need. But we, we should be willing to give all to him. Then, brethren, we need to choose today. We need to choose today. Which, which side will you take? 
You know, brethren, to be saved, we need to be justified. And we need to be sanctified. But the spirit of prophecy says that uh, while God can be just and yet justify the sinner to the measure of Christ, no man can cover his soul with the garment of Christ's righteousness while practicing known sins or neglecting known duties. God requires entire surrender of the heart before justification. Then before justification, we should <coughs> decide to surrender ourselves. And how about holiness? What is holiness? The Bible says, follow peace with all men and the holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Then uh, sanctification or holiness is conditioned to be in heaven. We cannot be sanctified before, uh, without being justified. We cannot be justified without complete surrender. Holiness, not a rapture. It is an entire surrender of the will to God. It is a living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is doing God's will. It is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. It is trusting God in trial, in darkness as well as in the light. It is walking by faith, not by sight. It is relying on God with unquestioning <coughs> confidence and the rest in His love. Complete surrender. There is a, a very essential question here for each one of us, brethren. Yeah. Why not make up your mind that you, you, are, you will not retain anything that separates us, separate the soul from God? I read again. Why not make up your mind that you will, you will not retain anything that separates the soul from God? Do I like something that's contrary God, to God's will? You should renounce. Say, here is my heart. I open the door. Come in. Lord Jesus, come in. I am thine, and thou art mine. Could you repeat that, brother? Here is my heart. I open the door. Come in, Lord Jesus. I am thine, and thou art mine. Now it says, if you will do this, he has promised that he will put a new song in your mouth. Even praise unto your God. I would in deep earnestness beseech you to make no delay, but come before God in sincere prayer without one moment speculation or hesitation and say, O oh Lord, I have opened the door of my heart to thy worst enemy and the worst enemy of my soul. I have acted as though I could save my own soul, as I could sin and then reform when I choose to do so. But I find a power holding me in his keeping. Thou alone can save me, that my soul shall not be eternally ruined. No longer will I withhold it from thee. I dare not trust in it with any power but thine. I lay it at thy feet. Thou Lamb of God, wash my soul in the blood of the Lamb. Close it with thine own garments of purity and righteousness. Amen.